Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Vietnam War. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, U.S. combat shotguns. A couple of you yesterday commented because you didn't watch all the way through to the end of the video, or I said I'd be doing a separate video on these, and you'll see why. It's kind of a lot to cover for one little specific um, group of weapons. Shotguns have been used by the U.S. military since, I mean, the way we know it today, the riot shotguns and trench guns and stuff since World War One. but shotguns have been used since the inception of our country and before called Fowlers and stuff like that. But we're going to be focusing on uh, shotgun use in Vietnam. And what's really interesting is a lot of the leftover World War II combat shotguns were actually used in Vietnam, and then they started requisitioning more, which we're going to get into and all that stuff. So they were very widely used. They were very convenient for um, like setting up security at night, uh, setting up uh, an area and securing that for close quarters things, room clearing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, slow on the reload, but when you need it, that packs a punch when you hit it. Um, all these shotguns that I know over 12 gauge, and they used either double lot buck or number four buck shot, depending on the scenario. There were different nomenclatures for the shot, uh, the load itself. But mainly it was going to be those two rounds, and then they had some flèche rounds, which were those little darts, pretty much, that they would use. And then some of the Navy SEALs or unconventional forces got the, what's called the duck bill, where it's kind of a flat thing, where they use the flèches or the um, buckshot, and it would spread it out over a flat, wide surface. So very interesting kind of thing there. But for the most part, it was just a conventional weapon. Uh, some of these you're going to see have heat shields with the bayonet lug for the 1917 bayonet. Um, but they off, I mean, you see them with and without and, uh, pre, uh, kind of a, uh, thing disclaimer for the pictures. I tried to find pictures of Vietnam soldiers using sh all these different kinds of shotguns. I looked as hard as I could to, you know, confirm the model and all that stuff. Some of them are easier than others. So I might not be totally accurate on the pictures, but nevertheless, it's still, they relatively look the same except for the details. Um, so don't take that totally seriously, like saying this is gospel with my picture references because I'm sure I might have made a mistake or two because it's really hard to see some of these pictures with the resolution and the size and all that stuff. So all that stuff aside, we're just going to kind of go through. There's about uh, six models that were the most common. I'm sure others were used and stuff. Some were privately purchased and sent over to Vietnam, but we're going to talk about the ones that the U.S. actually requisitioned and the ones that you're going to find that are U.S. property marked. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to stick with just for the sake of keeping it a relatively short video. So the first shotgun we've got is the Ithaca Model 37. Okay, so this was a riot gun used as kind of a trench gun in World War II. And the guys liked it. Uh, the main reason they like it is because as you can see on the receiver, there's no ejection port on it on the sides or on the top. It's on the bottom. So that actually allows for you to you know get a little bit more mud on the sides and on the top and whatever, and it'll still function. That's why the guys really liked it. And I, I believe this is one of the most common shotgun styles used in Vietnam and you know World War II in Korea as well. And then I think they served after the Vietnam War. So there's you know some pictures of guys um, carrying what I believe is an Ithaca 37, just because of the fact that I can't find an ejection port on the picture. So uh, these are going to have an S prefix on them for the ones that were made during Vietnam and or the ones that were reworked and then sent there, which is pretty interesting for the serial numbers. If you ever find one, an Ithaca Model 37 with an S prefix and U.S. property mark and all that shit, you might want to jump on that. It's a cool collector's item, and it's a nice shotgun. So... Um, then we'll we'll kind of get to the next one pretty quick, which is the Stevens Model 77E. This is another very common one, commonly used by MPs and other forces, but it was widely used in the field. So this one actually it was the first, or not the first, but um, I think it was the first one issued with a rubber butt pad on it, a recoil pad. And I read something about that it was, this buttstock was made shorter intentionally for um, consideration of our South Vietnamese allies who were generally smaller in stature. So it was kind of made shorter, which is probably why they put the rubber butt pad on there, which could have been removed. Um, that you know that could be just hearsay, but it they definitely were shorter, so maybe it, maybe it makes sense. Who knows? I'm not gonna not gonna say that's a fact, but it makes sense. So it's got a 20 inch barrel on it, which is a little bit longer than the riot guns, which have an 18 or an 18 and a half inch barrel on it. So you get a little bit more control on your pattern and stuff, but still great shotgun. You see these with and without the heat shields and all that stuff. And then Stevens also fielded the model 52030. So these are recycled World War II shotguns as well. Um, the 77E was kind of more of a 1960s use and design kind of thing. It was more modern for a shotgun. But the uh, model 52030 definitely was used 
probably not in the numbers that the other ones were, but you still see pictures like this one where that guy's carrying um, a 520-30. Decent shotgun as well, um, pretty common, especially early on, because when they were just trying to get all these recycled World War II guns out, it was very early. And then towards the end of the 1960s, we kind of see something a little bit cooler with uh, one we'll get to after this next one. Sorry, I got ahead of myself again. So the Winchester Model 12, okay? Now you're like, well, what about the 1897? There might have been limited numbers of those, but by, even by that time, they were being rendered obsolete because of the hammer and all that stuff. And they're a relatively old firearm even at that point. Okay, so the Model 12 Winchester was basically, I don't want to say it because you can be, no, it's not, but essentially very surface level, a Model 1897 without the hammer on the back and a receiver that's a little bit different but still the same concept and everything. And uh, so the Winchester Model 12 was very common. However, it was heavier, right? It was a steel receiver and all that stuff, just like an older model shotgun. Obviously it was from 1912. So that was very widely used too. You see that, I think this picture, the guy is carrying it. Um, and then in order to try and replace this, this, this old older shotgun and be more modern, Winchester came out with the Model 1200, okay? And it's got the, the longer, you can kind of see on the picture the longer um, pump, the, the pad that you hold the pump it. And it's still a pump action shotgun or slide action, they call it. And it was designed to replace the Model 12. It had an alloy receiver. It was more ergonomic. I think guys like those a lot better, but they didn't really start hitting the field until the late 1960s. So you'd see those mid to late war um, from what I'm guessing, because that was actually something that they requisitioned and were like, hey, this is actually a better design, so let's get a bunch of these out and distributed to the forces. Now, we get to the final one that is still one of my favorite shotguns to this day. It's probably not gonna go away anytime soon. The Remington Model 870. What was interesting about the Model 870 in Vietnam specifically is that it was mainly Navy and United States Marine Corps forces that used these. Uh, SEALs liked them. Um, the Naval Infantry, I forgot what you guys were called, uh, whatever. But uh, anyway, the Navy and the Marine Corps used these. They're heavy, but they work. And these were also in different configurations and all that stuff, heat shield, no heat shield. And the 870, I, it's cool because a lot of these will have like the 870 Wingmaster on the left side of the receiver and they'll say um, property of US Navy or US Navy property or something like that. So I found that pretty interesting. But yeah, you see a lot of these being used by Navy and Marine Corps personnel throughout uh, from about 66 on it looks like um yeah great solid design actually i think they're still being used in some capacity in the u.s military and again a great civilian shotgun i own a tac 14 which is a shorty version of the 870 but the 870 is probably my favorite pump action design um, that's affordable heavy duty reliable and all that stuff so those are the six main combat shotguns used in vietnam they were very effective I think the United States is one of the only militaries that uses a shotgun in combat still today. Uh, we were issued Mossberg 500s for the Army and the Marine Corps issued the Benelli M1014. So just to put that into perspective, they're still being used. And I think, yeah, we're one of the only countries that still uses them in a combat role, which is pretty interesting. Us redneck hick Americans, us rough riders. But anyway, I hope that sheds some light and you got some cool pictures out of this. And that's why I had to break it up in another video because there's no way I could fit it into that video yesterday. It was getting too long anyway. But all right, cool. I'm going to wrap this up. Nice, short, cool video. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and like this video. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on this. This series is going to be basically endless because there's so much to know about Vietnam and the micro level that I don't think I'll ever run out of topics to talk about. It's insane. I enjoy doing it and hopefully you're learning something. So yeah, I appreciate you watching. Consider supporting the channel too um, so we can get more gear. I'm trying to get some really cool stuff to show you guys and review and teach you about history more, like a lightweight rucksack and all that stuff. But they're very expensive. A lot of Vietnam stuff's getting really hard to find because it's you know been 50 plus years. So yeah, consider supporting the channel. You can do that in the description directly. Uh, if not, that's totally fine. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you're learning something. It's fun for me to do these. And I love Vietnam. It's probably one of my favorite military history topics. Um, yeah, I will be talking about other countries' involvement as time goes on. But like I said, I'm going to try to get the baseline covered for the United States as we were one of the bigger involved entities in the Vietnam War. And I am from the U.S., so 
I'm going to cover that first. I will get into other forces, allies, enemies, um, third party kind of countries, specifically Laos and Cambodia, because those are very underrepresented. But anyway, yeah, I'll be getting into all that, Australia, you name it. Just give me some time, be patient. I'll end this video, I'll stop ranting, but I figure these are the questions I've been getting in comments a lot, so hopefully you're watching this and it'll answer that. So I appreciate you watching everybody, and we'll see you next time.